try to get it going landscape, but portrait is uh, how it has to be. Uh, Ella will come see, have a look here at the setup. So here we have my big pot for uh, making a sauce. Over here, get some hot water ready to go for the macaroni or blanching the vegetables. And back over here, you fall this way, by the back out, is a little closer to see. There's the, the milk that is being heated up. Okay, so it's being warm, it's, a, it's warm. When we're do, making the mac and cheese, to make the sauce, it's very important that whatever you're doing, there's no extremes of hot and cold. You wanna make sure that your, whatever liquid you're adding is gonna be warm or hot, uh, and then you have your hot roux ready to go. So the first step um, that we have that we, that is the butter. I have the butter over here measured out, half a cup of the butter. This is my, my fancy pot here. Uh, these are the pots I have in my household. I didn't go and buy extra stuff for you guys at home. But in here, I'm gonna add the butter. I'm gonna melt that down. The butter is somewhat room temperature. I'm just gonna let it melt, okay? You don't have your your pan on at too high of a setting. Okay, mute it, please. Mute it, please. Okay, thank you. You don't have this at too high temp. You don't want to brown your butter, okay? That's uh, more or less burning and getting a nutty, a nutty nuance to it. Can you see this out? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to make sure that it gets um, nice and melted. Again, half a cup of butter in my pan. If I'm working too fast for someone who's really relying on this for their supper tonight, please let me know and I can explain what's going on. We got a shout out from uh, Amanda and Max is saying hi to Coach Mika. Kathy Aww. Edwards. Hey. says, woo, you started late. Can you start from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning. Yeah, this is the beginning. Come on, we just started. We were trying to figure out how to turn it, so. Yeah. And I gotta say, everyone out there who's uh, watching, um, my whole family is very excited to do this for you guys. They are so pumped. Uh, I had people fighting to do the camera work. That's all I gotta say, because my family is amazing. They're helping me out so much. So look here. The butter on my is uh, almost melted. What I'm gonna do now is make a blonde roux. So the uh, the roux is a thickening agent. Um, if you ever we talk about gravy, making gravy and sauces, roux is like a classic French thickening uh, ingredient. Uh, usually, it's about it's by weight, it's equal amounts of fat and flour. There are other things you can use um, to for thickening, but flour, a wheat flour. I'm doing today is it's just the it's uh, to me it's the best flavor you can have it non-toasted so just what a blonde or make it brown like brown for a gravy so what I do here before the butter burns because it's getting hot I'm gonna add in my flour the French rule Jen just said Sean Bailey says Lurch I love you and miss every single one of you <laughs> love <laughs> Oh, that was Dan, Jen said. Okay. And a shout so, out to Abram, who's cooking alongside you. Abram's cooking too, right on. Love it. Anyone from like, anyone you don't know on the Facebook feed? Well, it's my Facebook, so no. Oh, okay, really. well, it's all, okay, that's fine. Anyways, I think I have actually overdone this here. I made a batch, I, I, I kind of, um, I cheated a bit. I made a batch earlier with my ingredients and I over measured the second batch of flour a little bit thinking I need a little more and what happens is that you want to have the roots is a thickening agent uh, so in this here it should be a little bit more liquid I'm just gonna add a tad of uh, a little tad more butter but the measurements I gave you which I did earlier are gonna work perfectly so it should look like the description is uh, sand after the tide rolls out. I think that's what it is. It should look like kind of like uh, it shouldn't be too thick, or it, it shouldn't be like a, it shouldn't be like a thick paste, or it shouldn't be um, liquid, very liquidy. It should have a nice kind of a bubbling look to it. Len Mandigo says I like your shirt. Ian Griffin says hi guys. Hey. Sylvie Dover says. Haha, I'm watching. Kathy Edwards says no, it doesn't work. <laughs> what doesn't work? I don't know, I'm asking. Okay. So, 
I have my fan off right now. I have this a bit of a high temperature. It's getting dark. So I'm going to take this off the heat and make sure it doesn't burn. The biggest thing you make sure that you don't get, um, you don't have to caramelize or get it burning. So I'm taking off the heat right now because it's melted, it's incorporated, it's good to go. So I turn the heat down. And what I'm going to do here is just let this sit for a bit off the heat because I have my milk ready to go. Um, while we're on this topic, while we're getting this ready to go, I'm just going to mention, um, someone had asked about blanching the vegetables because I had a variant to this mac and cheese with some broccoli and cauliflower. So all the blanching means when you do blanching vegetables that you're par cooking it. So I have a pot of water on right now. I'm going to crank it back on high and I'm going to blanch vegetables in this first and then I'll do the pasta afterwards because the, the sauce needs some time to cook out. So, How many cups is two liters? Two liters is eight cups, approximately. Is someone in their car? <laughs> Who's in our driveway? Someone's turning around. Yeah. Vivian Burgess says I'm watching. Okay, and just, just so you know, I do, we do try to eat low carb, I, but I gotta say, I love having flour in the house for gravies and sauces. It's just the way I was kind of, I was taught. Um, the flour has the best mouthfeel, the best thickening agent. Uh, you can use cornstarch, other things, but they just, in the slurry, they don't turn out the same, I find. Um, so anyways, this is it here. That's my finished roux. It's not dark. Hopefully yours is not dark either. It should be yellowish color or blonde. And again, when it comes to a roux, we're using butter and flour. Um, when you're using other things for a gravy, if you're making a roux, you can use um, the fat from the like, chicken fat. You can use turkey fat, beef, beef suet from your roast or your, your drippings. You can use those other fats as well. It's just butter happens to be a neutral flavor to add that creaminess and uh, the, the flavor from the, the dairy products. So my water is almost back at a boil here. I have the saddest possible broccoli in the world and I also have cauliflower. I just trimmed it up, I uh, cut it up, washed it, and made it into relatively equal parts. I'm not gonna time this. All I'm gonna do is pop it in the water, one at a time. I'm gonna put this in for a couple minutes, and then the broccoli, the broccoli is very, very, very uh, tender. It doesn't need very long to cook out. So what, I'm gonna have the broccoli for a couple minutes only, and then I'm gonna, blend, I'm gonna refresh them together. Because they're going in the same dish, my family's eating broccoli and cauliflower with ham, and the vegetable sauce I made previously. But again, we'll continue this in a second. Angel, so. Angel Scott says, love that you do these. Vivian Jennifer Ber Burgess says, hi Kai. Meredith Kulash says, we're, we're making about half the amount, a little mass over here. A little mass. Vivian Burgess, Vivian Burgess says, how about, how about duck fat? And Chris Clarence says, hi. <laughs> Hello, Chris Clarence. So um, duck fat. Duck fat the main rule is with sauces, it, it, it's either going to accentuate or, or counteract. If you're making, like, so let's say I make this mac and cheese and I have duck confit ready to go. If I have duck fat, I'm going to use duck fat in my roux and flour. And then I take my stock or dairy products, whatever it is, and then I'm going to incorporate my... Eight cups. Okay, eight cups, mom. About eight cups, yeah, roughly. Okay, so right now the cauliflower is in. This is the same water I'm going to be cooking the macaroni in. Uh, there's no possible cross contamination there. But the same breath while this is cooking, uh, I'm going to timer for three minutes. I just need a reminder for myself that I want to add the broccoli in because I'll get, I'll get sidetracked with this. So now I'm going to put my heat back on medium for my roux. If everyone's caught up, hopefully you've caught up. I have the roux going now. I have, if anyone needs us to repeat something or slow down, just let us know. Yeah. Yeah, or if anyone has any questions, Mom and Kai are here to answer questions yeah. or, yeah. I have a pot that holds almost exactly two liters. You can see that. Now, the secret is with the roux uh, and incorporating it is you don't want to add it all at once just for fear of having uh, lumps. This is extremely precarious, isn't it? Yeah, I have not done it, I bought new pots because I'm very cheap and I don't do that. I'm going to add in... Mom, some... do we have any questions? 
So yeah, Ian Grandian says hi, hi, Tyler. Vivian Burgess says. Do we have should, any questions? Any questions? Yes, yes there is. Vivian Burgess says, should steam veggies be put in the ice bath to stop cooking or not? Yes. That's the next point. I'm kind of doing this all at once because I'm, uh, so see here quickly, I'm, uh, the roux is incorporated. I'm going to add a little bit more hot, hot milk to it. Kathy's asking if the milk is warm. Yes, it's, it's warm. Is that necessary? You don't have cold milk. It's going to create lumps that you don't want. You want to see when you're making your, your bechamel sauce. And by the way, this is just a classic bechamel sauce. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but it's a classic mother sauce that, that uh, all cooks, chefs are trained how to make. But again, it's a milk sauce sticking with a roux. And to make it different, a Mornay sauce, which classically has Gruyere cheese and Parm cheese. <laughs> what kind of comments do you get getting now? Oh, Johnny B on D is cooking. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so you see how it's progressing. I don't have any big lumps in there. And it's just smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate the last bit of milk I have. Cold and got lumps. Uh, well, we can fix that afterwards. I'll show her after, okay? Sorry, Kathy. Try to cover that in the beginning with the warm milk. Probably not. But uh, I need a short one. Mm. So if you look at this here now, uh, the sauce, let me put my spoon back in. It's kind of, it's getting a bit of a nice consistency to it. It's thickening a little bit. If you give a chance to cook out, not in a super high heat, but medium heat, uh, and just monitoring so it does not stick and burn. Again, uh, I didn't put this in the beginning. I think it's a little dork a little bit, but uh, a thicker bottom pot is, is, is preferred. I like this pot because you use it for everything. This has a nice, nice thick bottom to it. Uh, I do have a th other pot that I use sometimes, but it's a, it's a very thin bottom. It doesn't allow for, for much uh, transmission of heat. So if, if you have a very thin bottom pot, it's gonna, it, the heat from the element is gonna go right through and whatever's on the, in your bottom of your pot is gonna burn right away. So I am learning as I go here. Vivian Burgess says crap, I did the same with Gaffney. <laughs> Curbside dinner, there we go. Leanne says, it's okay ladies, Miko will fix it after with you. Yeah. Can herbs uh, be added to the bechamel sauce? We'll cover that in a second, yeah. So, Adam, Adam Finley says, what are you making? And Vivian Burgess says, can herbs be added to the bechamel? Okay. So I have the saddest looking broccoli possible on the planet. This is a total COVID like recipe. I had milk that was gonna go bad, cream was gonna go bad, I had Broccoli, which is a yellow almost, but it's still decent. Um, so I'm gonna toss this in. My cauliflower is getting close to being the level I want it done. So I'm just gonna incorporate my, I'm just incorporating my broccoli into the pot here. And I'm gonna give us literally two minutes just to continue cooking. When this is done, we'll start cooking the, uh, the pasta so that everyone can see the, the pasta. We don't cook pasta very often in this house anymore, or if at all, ever, except for friends that I cater to or whatever else. Vivian Burgess says, can we be added to the bechamel? Yes, you can add the bechamel sauce. The nice thing about this is this is a vessel for flavor. You can add things you want that add flavor. You can strain them out. If you have larger bits and bobs, uh, like bay leaves, uh, you're putting parsley in, uh, time, time strands. Think of this as a, as, a, as a blank canvas. You can add whatever flavors you want, whatever cheese you want to give you the right kind of end product. Think of your end goal, like this would be amazing with cheddar cheese uh, and then cut up hot dogs. I love it. Cut up hot dogs, throw them in the, into your pasta afterwards right when it's cooking and you're done. And then to, put your cheese, your cheese on top. You'll see how we finish this at the very end. So again, this is cooking out. I actually looked up some of my, my cookbooks and they recommend cooking for half an hour. Half an hour is a little excessive. It has to simmer for a while. 
um, to cook the flour out, but half an hour is a little bit excessive for this for this recipe. I think maybe 10 to 15 minutes is probably adequate, but you'll see uh, if you have, uh, when you add the cheese as well, it gets extremely, extremely thick and just luxurious. At that point, uh, you can start adding um, your flavorings as well. Now, if you have um, milk product that is cold and you've incorporated it in and it's lumpy, um, I did this even though I made one earlier, is I had a small strainer like this and a small bowl on the side and I, I just strained my mixture afterwards to get rid of lumps. Um, that's something that happens frequently. And I apologize for those, I did not, I should have say, I said warmed for the dairy ingredients. So my pot's gonna go right here. Right now, gonna fall. Fix it. Yeah, we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. Follow me out. Here we are over here by my little ah. little water bath here. Shout out to uh, to Meredith for the awesome little mug. Chris Fra Frank Doucette says, I guess this is better on a Friday night than an avalanche versus Sharks playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, last year was a different story, Chris. So I'm safe. It's been a different year this year. So I'm gonna take this out. Uh, I plan this poorly because I wanna go other ways, like this. And so I have a water bath, some, some water and ice. Not, the, I just wanna stop from cooking. I don't want too much. In it goes. And for those people who I'm gonna be giving the pasta to afterwards, uh, the color, the water's been colored. I really don't care. That's what you're getting. Chris Frank just said, <laughs> said still bitter. <laughs> So, I'm cranking that back on. We're putting the pasta in. I'm gonna keep stirring. That was maybe a couple a minute or so is gone. This, this milk sauce at medium heat is still simmering away. Nothing is sticking on the bottom because of, because of the heavy bottom. I'll show you, this is an old Chef Mika's catering pan, but it has a very thick bottom to it. What you don't want to do is use future anyways a thin bottom pan like the, the regular stainless steel ones they th the, the thicker bases help to stop from burning so if you have a very thin pan uh, again it's gonna be challenging for the root the root's gonna burn what's that I have a question, I have a question. question. Where, where are we? Shannon Tebow can you run it under cold water no can you run it under cold running water instead of ice bath yes that's fine that's fine Madrakula says, if you only have frozen veggies, could you use those? Yeah, and this is, again, this is the basis for the, this is the vessel for flavor. The pasta has no flavor at all. Like, honestly, I'm not a pasta fan. It's just, it's just, it's just little, little pieces of flour floating in water. Um, frozen veggies, chopped up spinach, uh, asparagus, sauteed peppers, sauteed onions. Whatever you want to add into this afterwards, it's yours to create. This is just mac and cheese. When I coined up hot dogs, go ahead. It's this is this is the basics. But I'll show you a finished product. Both. So I have buddy of pasta. I don't cook pasta anymore. I got to have it has directions here for me. Uh, how long does it want me to cook it for? It's in French. Eleven minutes. Sorry. In the pasta goes. I have some classic cut up macaroni. I do recommend, I'm using the spoon is here, uh, stir it up when you put the pasta in your in your pot for the boiling water. Again, that's salted water. I did add a generous amount of salt in the water. Jay, Jay says, Ella is Nika's twin. This looks delicious. <laughs> Jay who? Jay Dwight. Jay Dwight. Here, so nice. Jay, okay, what happens with uh, with pasta is if you don't stir it, if you've done pasta at home before, hopefully, is that it, it'll clump up together. So you make sure that it is uh, it is stirred up and doesn't stick to the bottom. I have this awesome pan that has an insert, which it won't stick to the bottom. But I'm gonna turn it down anyway so it doesn't boil over on me. Well, Uncle Chris is watching. Right. Hi, Uncle Chris. Hey. Marissa Cheslock says, ha ha ha, you heard my Italian heart that you are not a big fan of pasta. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, Dr. Mo might be watching. Chris said, do you use my nutmeg? Yes, I have uh, to finish the sauce off.
And finally, I have, uh, a date. Oh, sorry. I have some nutmeg here, some ground nutmeg. I've had this for about 10 years now. <laughs> it's, it's, it just doesn't go very far. Um, it doesn't go very much. But a little bit of nutmeg in the sauce, even a little bit of uh, uh, cayenne pepper helps add in. Again, using COVID rules here, I have uh, some salt I'm going to add in here. I kind of the last batch. I know it's approximately how much. It's all the flavor. It's what you really enjoy. I have pepper some on a fine grind. Again, white pepper is preferred. I'm using black pepper because this is what I have. We got COVID rules going on. My wife, Land, does not like white pepper. She thinks it smells like horse manure. And it's true. We have, we have a few comments. Yeah. Hey, Dave Edward says, first I dinner lol. Vivian, <laughs> Vivian Burgess says, I'm coming over in about two months. Two months. <laughs> You're Sean, Sean Barrett says, ha ha, this is great. I got nutmeg, the ground nutmeg. I'm going to add in just a little bit for flavor. It's just a classical flavor for bechamel sauce that goes really, really well. At this point, we, our sauce is more or less the consistency we want it at. I'm going to go back to my uh, spoon, actually. So this is, I remember teaching this one semester for some students and bechamel sauce is one of the actual exams. But uh, the consistency you want, it's nice and thick. You should have a nice distinct line in your spoon with that, okay? So it should be a nice thickness to it. It's gonna be even thicker when we add the cheese. It's gonna be just a glorious thing. Um, again, this sauce, we're making mac and cheese. I didn't put the timer on. How long ago did we put the mac and cheese in? 11 minutes. Uh, so like, How long ago? I don't know. I didn't put the timer on. Now okay. we have two more comments. Sean Barrett says, I did say to Laura, your Italian fans are going to be mad about saying <laughs> pasta has no flavor. Barrett says, thanks Mika, now I have to put hot dogs in this. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne Bruno says, you're lagging behind. Is the cheese in yet? Nope, cheese is gone in yet. I've added salt and pepper. I need a little, a little spoon out here. So why don't you give a recap, Mika, quickly of what's gone in here? Okay, so in, in this here, we added the butter and the flour. We made a roux. We didn't toast it. It's not colored. It's just it's just a blonde roux. We added the heated up milk or milk or cream or milk mixture that was heated. Uh, slowly whisked it in. We had some salt, pepper, and nutmeg. Uh, very just very classic. Again, bay leaves or something you could add in, some thyme. Uh, if you have some herbs at home you want to make into it. Now, it's just a blank canvas. It's just plain white sauce. It's beautiful. So I'm going to taste here to see. It's a little bit more salt. Any more questions, Mom? No, so we're good. We're good. Again, if you guys have any more questions about what to put in or what we're doing, just ask away and mom or Kai will answer. Or my dad. Oh, and let's turn the pasta up again because mm -hmm. it's sticking a little bit down there. Good. Even though I have uh, that insert and it's still sticking a bit, let me make sure that it's still way off. I add a little more salt because I didn't like the flavor. Again, taste your taste these as you can go, as long as it's safe. Uh, we have some. What does that mean as long as it's safe? Well, like, if you need, like, say, raw eggs or uh, some partially cooked beef, uh, best not to taste it. But we have a, a cream mixture here. Where I'm sorry, I'm milk, this is all milk. So we, have, we have a question. No, no an answer from Ella. An answer? Not an answer, but it's a comment to Ella. It's hi, Ella from Vivian. Hi, I'm from Vivian. He's our filmer today. Okay. Oh, I forgot a bit. So. No, I'm doing the thing. Yeah. You know what, Ella? If you, yeah. if Kai is doing a decent job. Okay. I think we're gonna switch to videographers for a second here. Is it okay? No, no, no? it's fine. No, we're good. Say, keep keep we're good, going. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. We're good. We're almost finished. Uh, this one here is done. Walk this well. Yep. So here is my. I didn't stir very much, but it is my broccoli and sad. Is there sad broccoli and cauliflower mixture? that I'm just strain afterwards. But it's just cooled down, the ice is all melted. Um, the broccoli is semi-tender, where you can still can chew it, and it's good. Because I want to do afterwards is bake this off in the oven with a sauce and some ham. 
Marissa, Marissa, just, Marissa Cheslock says, but we still love our Mika. It's a okay. So I have a brick of cheese. More cheese is better than than, than <laughs> less. So a, a full brick of cheese, cheese. four fifty grams. If you get the special ones, the four grams or so. Ah! so just <laughs> cheddar. I'm gonna add in. Not all of it at once. Kai was gonna grate this all for me. I'm gonna add this in. Uh, Todd Brown would like to know what wine pairing you would uh, have for this. I like a dry white. There you go. We have another comment, which is Vivian Fergus. Can we have her again? You can say that again. Okay. Vivian okay. says, Holy Black Pepper Batman. <laughs> I think it was Holy, yeah. holy Black Holly. Pepper. Holly went at two L's. That's okay. <laughs> He's my little Frenchman. Yeah, Frenchman. That's okay. Uh, pasta has been maybe about eight minutes. How long is it? Just so you know, this uh, other dish we're making, the 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 pasta dish, I'm gonna ship it off somewhere else where uh, someone else is gonna really enjoy it. Dave Edwards has sure been asking for it. Yeah. So, mom, are we, can we bring it to them? We could do a draw, maybe. Mm. Well, I, Maybe. Think, I think your mom has some uh, some takers for it. I have some frontline workers that are going to be receiving it. Yes. So again, I have used cheddar cheese on the. I've made and a batch before. I used gouda. Uh, just because it's orange doesn't mean it's mac and cheese. If you really want to have that mac and cheese feel, you can always buy. You can always buy stuff from the uh, bulk barn. They have that that orange cheese mix. But uh, again, it's just yeah. it's, it's it's just natural colors. Should we preheat the oven? Huh? That's good. Yeah. Oh, look at that! I had an idea. So we have one comment and one question. Wait, wait. So Laura Newell, no, Vivian LeBron says thanks, Mika. This is great. Laura Newell Barrett says, would you ever use other kinds of cheese? And Chris, oh sorry, oh, can you answer that question? And sure. no. And Chris Bendix says, do you put the breadcrumbs on top to on the end and bake it? Yes, so any kind of cheese you like is great. Um, this is just adding flavor. I've added the, the, the cheddar cheese. I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese as well, because I just like the depth of flavor that it provides. Um, you have to experiment with the flavors you like, really. Um, if you have a smoked cheddar you wanna add, go ahead, uh, add smoked cheddar to it. Make sure it's grated, make sure you incorporate it so it doesn't cause you lumps. Uh, so I'm pretty much the sauce is done, and I'm gonna take this pasta off. I think the pasta is done as well. Laura, we had a vote before we started. Uh, it was gonna be gouda or cheddar, and Kai chose the cheddar. So there what? you go. I didn't vote. Oh, sorry. And what about the breadcrumbs on top that Chris was asking yeah, about? Yeah, one thing you can do with that is uh, mix some melted butter with some panko breadcrumbs, ray of breadcrumbs, and just kind of incorporate a toast a bit, and then sprinkle on top afterwards. I'm not a big fan of, I never grew up with that, so I, I don't really do that. Uh, work, we do it all the time. It gives a nice crust if you're gonna bake something in the oven. Uh, it gives a nice crust on top, and there's a nice little bit of a, a counteraction of uh, texture. But uh, you can do that as well by adding different vegetables. Again, peppers, uh, asparagus, uh, you could add you know, hot dogs, I mentioned, but we're adding some ham, I think. So just, out uh, of the interest to help out people with some lumps and because this is almost done I'm going to turn the pasta water off by the time that I'm done straining this just to show you the pasta will be finished uh, yeah it's it's almost there so into my sink full of your dishes I go you comments. and I'm going to get a bigger So we have two comments. And we have four about. We have two now. So Chris says, nice, thanks. Kai, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. I think. Okay, okay Laura yeah. says, awesome, I love the smoke cheddar idea. Never thought of that. Vivian Burgess says, what happens if the sauce isn't thick like, isn't thick like yours? Hmm. What you could do before you strain it is if you're having issues with lumps, you can take an immersion blender. Uh, I've she wants to know how, how she wants to, how, she, how to thicken it. Well, you sh with your two liters and the amount of, of, of room, it should have done a good job. Um, you can take an immersion blender. I'm going to ask her, is it runny, Vivian? Let us know, is it yeah. runny? 
And Kathy's the same. Hers yeah. is like a pancake batter. Better, yeah. Then add, add a bit more, uh, more, more milk to it. If it's really, if it's, if it's, if it's if not it, thickening well, you can use an inversion blender, put it in for a little bit, and then strain it. So how much more milk would you recommend <coughs> at the end? Until you get the consistency you want. You could add, uh, at this point, you could add some broth if you wanted to, or more milk or dairy, whatever it is. But uh, you can just make sure that it's, it's the right consistency. You don't want to have pancake, pancake batter. You want to make sure that it is, it should be, it, it's not pan, well, I guess so. Uh, did you add the cheese already? Did Kathy already? Are you asking Kathy? Yeah. yeah. Did she add the cheese already? I don't know. Kathy, did you add the cheese already? As one could say, this is pancake batter. We, we, like it's, it's, yeah. it's thick and it's thick enough that it's pan, I haven't had that question about this. Like I've end used, of it. I've made batters like this consistency before, so I mean it depends. Thing. Vivian Burgess says it doesn't cost the back of the spoon runnier than Mika for sure. Okay. Well, this is finished now with all with all the cheese I've added to it. But Vivian's is runnier. It's runny, so. And I, Kathy says it, I don't know what the question yes was. What did we ask her? Okay. If it was thicker than this, that's what we asked. Her. Yeah, it was a thicker than this because this is a gooey, cheesy mess right now. It's beautiful. So just add a bit more liquid. Yeah, just add more liquid. So in case you have issues at home with lumps, not that the kids will care because it's, it's macaroni and cheese, <laughs> but you can take, again, don't go with a fine mesh strainer, something that has larger holes just to stop any kind of uh, clumps of flour if you do have them. And what should Vivian do? Oh, she didn't measure. Well, that's why, silly. Okay, I'm going to shame your aunt on the social media. It's okay. <laughs> She's a great cook. She's amazing. Does awesome stuff. Why Well, measuring, like, um, I never used to measure roux either, but it does help. Uh, general rule, when you're making a roux for a, a sauce or a gravy, um, is about one pound of roux for every four liters of liquid. So at Christmas time, when we do, um, when we do turkeys, I kind of use that rule uh, for about, about four liters of, uh, of turkey stock and or whatever else, uh, like cream, for about one pound of roux. So that would be um, half a pound of butter with about half a pound of flour, which is just over, uh, it's about, let's say two cup, it's about a, just over a cup. Now, Sean's asking, if you were going to make this into a real Finlander recipe, what would you throw in? Oh, my God. That's a, that's a sick Not question. hot dogs. No, well, I grew up on hot dogs. but. Kathy uh, says, I added cheese, and yes, it is thick. Okay, perfect. But here we are doing this step now. It is the, uh, we're just straining. And you'll, you'll notice once we're finished, again, I, I am a big believer in spatulas. The more you can use them, the less waste you have. I'm just trying just, just to show you at home, make sure how to get rid of lumps if you do have them. <clears throat> or if you added some ingredients you want to strain out, like let's say some thyme, uh, parsley, other things you want to, you want to strain out of there. Onions. Vivian so. Burgess says, oh Mika, you're so sweet and saucy, lol. Smoke, and she also said smoked salmon. I know that answer. Well, that's true, that would be good. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, for me and Ella, Kai and yeah. mom would hate that. No! Really? You Mom like would hate salmon? that. Kai yes. would like it. I would okay. like it. So, anyways, I used to in a in a strainer. I find a spoon or a ladle works well because you can see I can kind of get every, every crevice, and you want to make sure that the bottom gets finished. So this is just a bit of an exercise to help out. I don't want to wait too long to get this in the oven. Chris everyone... says, "Can we do this again?" Yeah, for sure. Does he mean a different recipe? A different, different recipe. So nice and. Th Nice and thin out, nice and sorry, strained out. Here we go. Now this cheese sauce, broccoli, cauliflower. Uh, put it uh, with anything you want. It doesn't have to be mac and cheese, but this is our base for our mac and cheese. Uh, it's gonna be awesome, great. So I'm putting it aside for now. This is we have ham. The ham is fully cooked. If we have cooked chicken diced, uh, I have no issues with using that. But just don't add anything raw to this if you're gonna add it. Uh, I'm going to go grab this pasta. This pasta is finished. Oh, by the way, if you guys would like to, I don't know, uh, give us some ideas on what to make next, that would be awesome. Just to see what everyone's interested in making. 
Just for the sake of uh, pots and whatever else, I'm just gonna throw it back in the same pot that I strained it from. I have no no concern over that. I'm gonna take my. Are we caught up with everyone else? Is there any questions before I would no, proceed? Sure. So did you say that pasta was a tad underdone? It's a tad because I'm gonna bake this in the oven for a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna put any toppings on it or anything else to it, but it's because this is going to some of our friends. I want to get it them tonight, uh, and we want to eat supper eventually. So it's we almost... have. So we have two Five comments. Three. So Vivian yep. Burger says lettuce, and then Meredith Villa says yeah, lettuce, and then oh lettuce, yes. Lettuce, yes. And Meredith says Abram wants ribs or chicken wings. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> Natalia Van wants to make lettuce. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. That's, that'd be really a lot of fun. Ian also Crates. wants homemade pierogies okay. or crepes. So we got. Uh, I don't do. I'm not. I'm not Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm adding my cold ham in. It's diced, it's ready to go. I'm adding it in. I really am not offended at that at all. I'm gonna add in my sauce. Almost ready. Thank you. I don't know if that was, I, that might have been tag. I don't know that that was. Yeah, yeah. So I'm adding my sauce in. I'm not gonna add all of it in at once because I don't think we need all of this. The rest I may keep for something else, but oh, you can. Grandpa Paz putting in a request for chicken marsala. Oh yeah. Lynn Supriel oh, okay. says, is that the deal? You cook and we get deliveries? <laughs> so, I didn't add all of it in. Um, I I made two years of sauce, because it depends on what you're doing, how much you're doing. Sorry, I just uh, taste the sauce, very nice. Um, I don't think it needs anything else. It has a beautiful texture to it. You could eat like this. It really is not a problem with eating like this. What I do is I put a pan for someone else, and then I'm just gonna finish off our supper. So this is uh, the mac and cheese. It's gonna go into a pan and then we're gonna go. Is there two deliveries or one leg? I'm sorry? Do we have two drop offs or one? Whatever there is allotted for whatever. Okay, well I'll put it in one pan and we'll bake it off for a little bit. A little, a little bit. Vivian Burger says, oh and stove top coffee. Need measurements, <laughs> water, do water to coffee. How long does water boil? <laughs> she loves that coffee. Laura Laura Barrett says, What's your favorite thing to cook? Ooh, that's a hard question. Mika, what's your favorite thing? Uh, I love making sauces. I love like gravy sauces. Um, usually meat and sauces. That's my that's my thing. Because there's a lot of uh, guesswork into it. Not guesswork, a lot of creativity you can add it and, and make it your own. Baking... I would have thought you were gonna say soups. Soups are fun too, yeah, but sauces I've just I love the texture, like make... I love the yeah. thickness, I love the you like uh, making broths too. <laughs> we got two comments. Oh no, one question and one comment. So Kathy Edward says, when do you add the broccoli and cauliflower? Okay, that's next. And Vivian Burger says, OMG, throw out your craft dinner boxes, people. Well, I'm wondering <laughs> if Kathy, Kathy, Mika made the cauliflower and the broccoli so that we could have a low carb option. Yeah. But so, if you're doing the pasta option, you could have just thrown that right in, correct, Mika, yeah. with the pasta? So I have the broccoli and cauliflower here. I'm going to take this here. I should have straightened it earlier, but I was lacking, lacking supplies to do that. So we, have, we have a question and one comment. The saddest broccoli ever. Michelle Liu says, yummy. Okay, top right drop. Okay, we don't know what happened. Sorry, it just disconnected. That was that was really weird. Okay, well we're back, and uh, so I'm doing the next step, which is gonna be the uh, broccoli. So I, I saw this on a recipe for a, a diet doctor or a low carb recipe. Again, the flour is not low carb, but I find it has the best uh, thickening ability. You can use other uh -huh. items as well. I just don't know if it's gonna save it now. That that's weird. So I'm the ham, yeah. broccoli, cauliflower. I made a bechamel sauce here, uh, Mornay sauce now, but instead of adding uh, cheddar, I use Gouda, so I'm going to add in... Mom, um, your battery's almost. getting low. We're almost done. Okay. So adding almost all this in. We're sorry to anyone that's just been joining because it, yeah, it kicked us out. So we have a three, uh, I think there's a few questions. So Vivian Burgess says, and why wine be incorporated in the sauce? If so, when? Uh, before you strain this, before you strain it, I would incorporate some white wine if you want to. 
Uh, Kathy Edwards says, so do I add the vegetable the vegetable mix, the mac and cheese mix, the mac mm -hmm. and cheese mix? That's totally up to her, yeah? Okay. Yeah. And she did it. A Drake Witt would say, I'd love to learn how to dice onions and make a chicken homemade noodle soup. Cool. There's also Those Glenn Budo awesome. who said, how long in the oven? Um, I, if you check in the oven quickly, I just turn it on. It's going to take maybe 5-10 minutes, about 10 minutes max. Just to, if you have a topping on it or some more cheese, again, more cheese is never a bad thing. Just sprinkle on top Parmesan cheese or grated cheese. Uh, just for the sake of what we're doing dishes tonight, to help out with the cleanup. We got Leanna Holmes that says, this is great. <laughs> Kathy Edwards said, did it stop live? I don't see it or where uh, Okay, hey guys, can you, put, can you put in the comments, because it's it's not joining, we just started a new one. Can you put in the comments that it kicked us out? Yeah, Kai, can you say kicked us out? We had to start a new video. So again, here we go. Now, I haven't washed my hands in this process, but I, I wash my hands frequently before. I've got to say, like nonstop, um, I will wash my hands once we get in the oven because this has all been one long, one long step to get this all finished up. Now, my this is our supper tonight with the ham and the bechamel sauce, the broccoli, the cauliflower. No, we're not done yet. Some people are saying that was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Oh, it's all right, buddy. Okay, so we'll leave it in. There's stuff in the oven. They're yeah. Good. They're oh, good. They're, they're, good. Oh. they're maybe done. If you have any pictures that you want to send or of your cooking or your kids cooking or whatever else, please send in the comments. Yeah, we'd love to see love how to it see turned you. out. So this is my family's supper tonight. Uh, the sauce is hot from earlier, but just as a little bit of an extra, Ooh, what are we gonna add, Dad? Just a, Ooh, yeah. A little bit of grated cheese when you come top. Lux when you come top. So we've been at this a little longer. Like we went over our meeting a lot of time, uh, by about fifteen minutes. So hopefully, half an hour will be finished. But we did. We covered quite a bit of ground here. So that's finished off. Into the oven it goes. About ten minutes until this melts. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So please have fun, have a good, good weekend. Stay safe, wash your hands like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do right now. And uh, we miss you guys and look forward to seeing you all once this is uh, ended. Okay, stay safe. First I melt some butter, then put some flour in, then made a roux, and then we put the milk in and made bechamel sauce.